Hej alla där ute, välkomna till ännu ett program av Backa framåt. Jag heter Sean Atzi, det är jag som är programledare. Vi har haft otroligt roligt under de här programmen som har varit redan. Vi har haft jättebra gäster. Jag vill tacka alla er som tittar och alla ni som fortsätter att titta. Ja, vi ska välkomna, vi ska göra en lite speciell program idag. Okay? Jag har en gäst idag som jag har jobbat med lite grann. Han är en stand-up-komiker, född uppvuxen i Miami. Men han kör stand-up här i Sverige- Vi har jobbat tillsammans och vi kommer göra det lite annorlunda idag. Vi kommer göra hela programmet på engelska så mycket som det går. Och vi välkomnar in honom direkt. Stor applåd till min vän, stand-up-komikern Mr. Jonathan Rowling. What's up, man? Is okay. Is we we do English. We do this. Is good. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Um. I uh, John, you uh, English, uh, you uh, your English uh, good. I'm just, I'm just joking. <laughs> I know. I'm like, <laughs> did you forget everything? <laughs> They're like, I, I, I talked to this guy. Where is he? <laughs> is he nervous? <laughs> Welcome to the show, John. Thanks for having me, man. It, Appreciate dude, it. you were one of the first guy when I was doing this show, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted to have. Um, uh i wanted to really have a a guy that does stand up mm-hmm. and a funny a funny black man mm-hmm. you know, the, the black thing in sweden and stuff like that so yeah. kojo couldn't do it <laughs> so kojo said no okay <laughs> so, i'm glad i was a uh, second <laughs> oh dude you were way down the list <laughs> <now. laughs> oh well thanks man i'm glad i was pleasure I'm having you here my brother <laughs> seriously here, yeah. pleasure pleasure having you here yeah, i'm glad to be here yeah man, man. We, we we like done a, done some work together on yeah stage and uh, i really admire your style i really Thanks, admire man. uh the kind of the kind of uh humor that you bring to the table i really like it so let's let's start talking about you and and uh, a little bit of background so our viewers know like what you have done i know that you were born and raised in miami yeah well born i'm a military brat so i was born in texas actually but raised in miami okay yeah so how long you been in sweden six years now six years Okay. Well, yeah, man. Kids, family. Two kids. Two I'm kids. A five-year-old and a two-year-old. Oh, I hope they look like their mother, man. <laughs> <laughs> or, or else. One does. The other one's just shit out of luck. <laughs> and my son looks. Uh, I don't know. Everybody says my daughter looks like me. I think my son looks like me. He's What? got my body. My son. Oh, he got this big, hefty. Yeah, like, big, big rump. He yeah, got the big rump yeah. and, the, and the arch back. And all, yeah. You remember when we did the stand up and I, I was talking like ten minutes about your how big your ass is? You <laughs> I would say ten minutes. <laughs> you remember that? I was like, dude, did you see the ass? That's on that? what. That's when they were booing you. Yeah, I remember that shit. <laughs> you can dodge a tomato, man. <laughs> Oh, dude, tomato, like <laughs> celery, everything. We have also a build on Jonathan here. If we can just clip it to the screen, you see the picture I I downloaded yeah, for yeah. yeah. Dude, what happened to that guy, man? I don't know, man. Age, he Sweden, had, he Sweden had, happened. <laughs> he had hopes, dreams. He yeah. almost had a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Still don't have I still got a little bit I think the military did that Make my mustache thin man I hey, look at me Dude that. I shaved this morning Like it's crazy <laughs> Like no, I, I like to uh, I, You know what I just got a, um, a step down uh, To change the power From European power To okay. American power Because we do it With 110 votes Okay You got to do 210 Or 220 here Okay So I finally got My good clippers man So if you ever need a Hook no, up I got you I'm good uh, <laughs> Thanks. I'm good. <laughs> I, I I got my Kurdish the guy. We we have like we have special special barbers. Like, oh yeah, like, I, I see. I've seen it, right? Yeah, yeah, but you, you're always fresh too, man. You always got the fresh cut. I I try, dude. Like he's not he's not easy. You know, I'm 41, dude. He's like, uh, oh. like when I was in my 20s, I woke up and got out. You know, yeah. now I I'm not waking up like this. <laughs> it's like, it takes time. It takes time to do this shit, man. It's oh my god, it's Pilates, yoga. No, I'm just kidding. I was gonna say, yeah, damn. <laughs> no, I don't do that. Okay. I just lay out. I just lay off the uh, like booze and and you know pasta and stuff like that. I don't touch that shit. You don't drink at all. No, I haven't. I've never seen you drink. Either. No, I don't. I haven't drink like I. I 
I've drank two times in the last eight years. I, I stopped drinking altogether when I became a father. Really? Yeah, when my son was born, I was like, this sounds like I had alcohol problem. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> sounds like I wanted to stop punching my wife in the face. So, uh. <laughs> I, I, I was so tired of waking up and having my asshole. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, now I just, I don't know. I just felt like I don't need alcohol in my life. And then, mm. then I just stopped drinking. So I... I, I I've been drunk like two times for the for the past eight years. Like, wow! Yeah, but I do heroin every day. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Oh, no. man. I, I, uh, I no. don't drink. I don't get drunk in front of my kids. That's my rule. Yeah, that's a good rule. Yeah, Seriously, that, that's a, that's a great rule. I, I think. never seen my parents drunk in front of me. So no, I, I never like I never that. seen my parents drunk either. I seen my dad like. Like drink beer a couple of times, you know. He, my dad used to at restaurants and stuff like that. So, but never like drunk or never like. He wasn't like, no. He didn't need. He didn't need alcohol to hit me. He did it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Oof, man. Yeah, uh, we we're talking about that uh, recently. The uh, the difference in raising kids here in Sweden. Yeah, but I, I wanted to talk about your military background first. What kind of military were you? Air Force. Air Force. Yeah, man. Oh, but you didn't fly the planes and stuff nah, like that? No, I not. told the motherfuckers where to go. <laughs> I was an air traffic controller, man. Oh, okay. So I sat in the tower and talked to all the, the pilots and stuff. Interesting, man. Yeah, man. But did you travel a lot or? Uh, my first, they sent this Miami boy, my first base, to Alaska. They were like, all right, you're doing Alaska for three years. That's why you like Sweden, dude. Yeah, so I don't mind. Yeah. yeah, yeah. People ask me about, oh, you're from Miami? I'm like, I did three years in Alaska. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. So yeah, I was in Alaska for three years. Then I went to Turkey for a year and a half, and then I went to you went North to Turkey. Carolina. Yes. You know I'm I'm cut from Turkey, right? Yeah, I know your all your whole family. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you from Turkey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your cousin owed me money. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, but uh, yeah, I'm, I was in uh, Adana. Oh, for for a year and a half. A year and a half. Yeah. Dude, that's that's really really cool. Did you learn any Turkish though? I learned uh, Tamam. You know everybody say Tamam yeah. all the damn time. I learned, uh, damn, my, my head's going blank right now. Uh, Gouda Shudish. Gouda Shudish. Yeah. Oh, that's I a good one. I learned Merhaba, of course. Um, there's more, man. I know uh, when I'm around uh, Turkish people, I try to Okay, it comes, it comes up. Yeah. Then, eh? what, what, do you, what do you think about Turkey, though? I loved it. You loved it? That's my, my best memories in the military was from Turkey. Oh, cool. It wasn't even year and oh, a half. Alaska that's and a, Turkey. Yeah. Year and a half. That's a long time, though. Yeah, man, I got to, I got to, but uh, some of it, I went to Iraq for a little bit, and okay. then I came back to Turkey. But that's uh, how I met my wife, actually. I met her in Turkey. You met her in Turkey? I met my wife in Turkey. Yeah. Okay. She, well, was, she, uh, she was like on vacation, what? She was on vacation, and I was on vacation. Because as an air traffic control, I never get to go on vacation like that. Okay. With the base. Like, the base does stuff, but I had shift work, so I couldn't go ever. Okay. But since I had just gotten back from Iraq, I was able to go on a Memorial Day trip with everybody. And my wife happened to be... In Turkey, uh, in Alanya. That where weekend. else, dude? I know, right? <laughs> like, where else? <laughs> and we were like, oh, we're going to meet some European women. No, no, no. And we went, and we I met her, and I didn't know I was going to meet my wife, but yeah, I did. That's a good story, dude. Yeah, man. Can't wait to tell my kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a good story. And she was like, she just fell in love because you're the like only black guy in Turkey. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> I'll take <Yeah>. that one. <laughs> <laughs> she, didn't, she didn't like you. It was like... Lack of options, actually. No, no. <laughs> All my homies were there. Oh, everybody the was whole, there. The base, yeah. There was a base trip, Memorial Day. Everybody goes. I had, like, a similar uh, experience when I was in Thailand. Like, a long time ago, I was in Thailand. And it was this um, uh, uh, Navy, uh, what do you call it? Boat or? Ship or? What the? You heard that? What was that? Oh no, it's outside. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Skip it. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, sound. No, I had a I was simil- like, Is that on the other side of the wall? <laughs> yeah. You got something you want to tell me? I'm like, I'm like, it's fucking haunted in here, dude. <laughs> I'm like, man, somebody got out of their, their, their ropes <laughs> in the back. I'm like, how fast can a black guy make somebody <laughs> pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like the makeup girls already giving birth. <laughs> so uh, I had I had a similar experience when I was in Thailand like a long time ago. Then this uh, Navy American Navy boat, what do you call yeah, it? Like I would say a ship. Yeah, yeah a ship or, or a carrier. It depends if it had aircraft. No, like, right. like this big aircraft ship. Like, yeah, the yeah. aircraft carrier. Yeah, and they had like vacation. Yeah, <laughs> I was in Phuket though, right? 
Like, dude. Oh, yeah, just hang I, it up. They yeah. got money, too. No, it was crazy. Yeah. It was the one of the craziest thing I ever experienced. Like, think we were sitting in a bar, right? And there are 300 Navy guys rah, rah, come in. And they just fuck shit up. They took, like, the bartender, throw him out. Start, oh, really? Yeah, dude, start taking their own beer and, like, like owning the place and everybody. Like, like, it was crazy. We just left. I was, wow. I was like, I, I, I went nothing to do. The police came, like, police, they can't do, sh they can't do shit. Oh. Like, what, 10 police guys in mopeds, like, in Thailand? Yeah, yeah. You got these big American dudes, Navy yeah. guys. Yeah. They can't do anything. That's fucked up. Yeah, but kind of funny, though. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, really, yeah. really kind of funny. So you met your wife in Alanya. You came back to Sweden. No, I finished my military career. I, f I had another. I went back, finished Turkey, and then I did a year in North Carolina. Okay. And my wife came. To visit me three times in North Carolina, dude. That's love, though. She paid her way. That's love. That's love. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "What?" I was like, "How much I owe you?" She's like, "I got this." I was like, "Oh shit!" It cost me a thing. <laughs> <laughs> she, she took care of that, and uh, I was surprised at that. When I came here, um, leaving Turkey on the way to North Carolina, I stopped by in Germany, hanging with some homies. Uh, they let me do that because I had done. I think you're the first guy who uses the the word Germany and homies in the yeah. same sentence. No, they were like on. They were uh, Americans, but okay. they were on the. Oh, okay. They were stationed there. I thought you had friends in homies, homies in Germany. No, no, no. It was my military homies, <laughs> like black guys going Achtung, meine Lieben. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, they, they were they were Americans. No, they were stationed there, so I was like, I'm holler at them. But then I said, man, what's up with that Swedish girl, man? So I, I took a quick ride there to uh, Stockholm, hung out with her for a couple of days. Then I went, you know, finished my Germany and then back to uh, the States. That young love, eh, hey, John? Yeah, man. I was like, yeah, I yeah. like her. L young love. Yeah. And that was <laughs> getting there. I didn't, I'm, I thought she was pretty, but I was like, she all right, you know. <laughs> and then. Uh, <laughs> you know she's going to see this, right? Yeah, she goes, yeah. she knows the story. <laughs> I was like, she all right. And then uh, she when was, I saw she her, was thinking the same thing about you. Yeah, she's so like, hey, shit. <laughs> <laughs> he got, he nice. <laughs> no, but uh, when I saw her this time, when he I nice. came here, and she picked me up from the um, that long ass bus ride from fucking Skovsta. Oh, you did that? Uh, yeah, I didn't know shit. So she, uh, when she came to pick me up from the train station or the bus station, I was, she looked stunning. I was like, oof, okay, oh. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, she fine as hell. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, we kept in touch and all that, and then she came to visit me three times. North Carolina, North Carolina. She what, did a what? whole a summer, got her a job and everything. Dude, that's I an ambitious like, girl, man. Yeah, I was like, you don't want. I mean, I'm not gonna be off of work the whole time, so you could be bored sitting in my apartment. So we get you a little restaurant job. And she worked at a little restaurant with all the. So you just pimped so, her out. <laughs> You're like, I was like, and you give me the money when you come home. I was like, either under the table or over the table. <laughs> you make the <a> decision. <laughs> no, but she, uh, she uh, worked at the restaurant, made some, had some cash so we could go party and stuff. And you know, she had a good, t we had a good time. That's so what I fell in love with. How her. how how long did it, did it take for you to move to Sweden though? We, uh, I moved when I got out. I did a, a Euro trip. Okay. At the end of that year in North Carolina, it was my time was up. I did six years. My six years was up. And uh, I came to Sweden in 2006, and I tried to live here. I got deported, man. From Sweden? Yeah. Dude, talk to my relatives. They know how to stay here. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. I was like, I'm American. I came here with a backpack. Oh, no, no. I was no. like, yeah, yeah, I'm a, I got a backpack. I'm American. They're good. I'm an air traffic controller. I was going to work at... Um, Arlanda, yeah, but they took too long, and my visa ran out. They were like, I was. They were trying to figure out, you know, because uh, the, so, the language so is they English. They fucking kicked air you traffic. out. Yeah, the language is English. Air traffic, and then uh, they were like, okay, we, we know you could do it. I went up there. I was listening to the trip. I was like, I could do this shit right now, and then uh, they they it was so much bureaucracy, you know. So yeah, yeah. Honest, man. And then the pay then was eighteen thousand a month to be an air traffic controller. After taxes? After, and shit? Yeah, no, before taxes. He's yeah. like, before. Nah, I nah. said, I asked him that. I said, is it after taxes? He was like, uh, everything is before taxes. And I was like, 18000 for air traffic control? In America, you're making six figures? There's no way. But he said that they had some rule that every tower had to make the same amount of money in the country. But I they've changed it since then. Now they make good money. I didn't know that. Yeah, it was crazy. Who the fuck want to do that for 18000 man? That's what I before said. Before taxes. I was going to do it, though, just to be here, you know? Yeah. Uh, but then, anyway, I got deported. They said my time was up. <laughs> Get your black ass out. And uh, I learned those words in Swedish. So. 
<laughs> no, but I was practicing the language. I learned. They the were language. like, "How many thousand two cents?" Spot kept on. No, but they, uh, they, I learned the language. Then I started learning the language then. And, so you uh, came to Sweden, right? So you started living. You got deported, and you came back. Yeah, I li we lived together six years in the states, and then uh, that's when I lived in Jersey. Okay. Yeah, uh, I came back. I loved New York. You know, I lived in New York like for uh, six months. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, I lived in Manhattan for like six months. I were there, man. I was, I was, I was going through some shit in my life. Oh, so you were, you worked in the bathrooms, like you were cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I was so bad. <laughs> like that, that joke physically hurt me. <laughs> like seriously. <laughs> no, I, I was going through some some shit in my life. My early twenties, like mm -hmm. my, I, I lost my uncle, and like I had this big fight with my family and stuff like that. So uh, my cousin, he was actually um, together with a half uh, American, half uh, uh, Swedish girl, right? Okay. Her father was. Um, from new york and uh, mom was swedish so she so he and she was going down to new york to visit her dad and he was like look i know you're going through some stuff if you want to just come and hang with us we go down there we're gonna be there for a couple of weeks and uh just just uh just come away from everything right so i was like yeah i'll do that like i've never been in uh states never been in new york so sounds good like we do that this, this was uh before like 9 11 and everything okay so i went there and uh i was there for like maybe 10 days and then i met uh his girlfriend's best friend so oh. i started like dating her and then we got like serious then i was there for like six months Damn. yeah and, and you lived in manhattan no the whole time? no we lived in uh, rhode island actually oh rhode island yeah, okay so, so you were in oof. yeah i was like New England. big time yeah so now i lived in manhattan i live in uh, 76th and amsterdam just okay. like 20 minutes walk from uh, times square and then we moved to to like a little house in uh, in um, uh, rhode island actually so okay. that's what that that was uh, like this is uh, look at this segue this is a this is a professional segue okay let yeah. me see let's do it yeah. let's do it that was actually one of my first uh, stand-up experience <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> great segue yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no i had like one of my new york was one of my first like real real stand-up experience and like i said we've been working we worked did a couple of work together you and me i love your stand-up i love your Thank you. like uh, personality on stage so when i was in new york we went to this comedy club i like right? how you snuck in on stage yeah <laughs> <laughs> off stage, you don't like my personality. No, right? I like your, I like your personality on stage, not in private. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, no, <laughs> private. You're an asshole. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, that's true. Accurate. <laughs> yeah, he's right. <laughs> When you're right, you're right. Uh, exactly. So I went to this uh, stand-up comedy club. Wait, you were doing stand-up already? No, no, no. I wasn't. I wasn't. You hadn't no, even done nothing. It. I, I, I done nothing like on stage, like nothing really. So I did. I went to this comedy club in New York. And I saw like I saw like you know Eddie Murphy and Richard Pryor and stuff. I always loved stand up. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna go to a stand up club. So we did that. And me and my cousin we were sitting in the front row, right? And it was this like oh, two drinks minimum, and you have to be. Yeah, we took our drinks and we sat like in the front row. And my cousin was like, "Fun, cause he wanted to sit there, so." <laughs> Uh, and I'm like, I'm if I'm you sit there, what's going happen? Right. What's yeah. the worst thing? Can yeah. What's the worst thing can happen? Like, <laughs> and and he started really hesitating. He was like, No, well, I don't want to sit over here. It doesn't feel good and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, Okay, fuck it. We'll go in the back. So we set let, set a couple of rows in the back, and then this couple sits in our places, right? Yeah. So the show starts. The host come out. He go like, Hey, how you doing? And then points at the couple that took our seats, uh -huh. and he's like, You motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> And like 10 comics, every comic was fucking them up, like with jokes and stuff like that. Oof. And then I was like, think if we were sitting there still, <laughs> and the hosts were like, where you guys you from? Motherfuckers. Where you guys from? We from Sveria. <laughs> oh, dude, that would fuck us up. Yes. Well, we're, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that, that was my like experience with stand up, like this raw, like jumping out yeah. to the audience and like. You like that too. Yeah, I, I am because yeah, I yeah. love that kind of humor. And then I came to Sweden. I came back to Sweden after six months. And then me and my cousin went to Gamla uh, Stan, Engel, and they, they, they used yeah. to have a, a stand up there, right? Okay. So me and my cousin went there, and I was thinking, like, oh, it's going to be like New York and this uh, uh, tough ass comedy, like roasting people, like don't give a shit, that kind of comedy, right? So we go, like, there's this Swedish guy on stage, and he's like, 
Vad heter det blickslås när det inte finns någon lås? <laughs> I swear to God, I never ever forgot that joke. Oh, it's a real joke? Yeah, it's, he said that. <laughs> he said, Do you remember the comic? No, I don't remember the Ooh, comic. I always I knew the uh, comic. <laughs> But uh, but now if he's he's like oh my god that's, that's my, my joke, joke. <laughs> fucking shout out to the talk to this guy uh, yeah he he said that joke and me and my cousin we were like what if he threw the blicks loss oh what if he threw the blicks loss then there's no loss that was the joke <laughs> I swear to God uh, and me and uh, my cousin and he did and I never forget this but seriously this this is the joke okay, okay. he has his fingers like this and then he goes what if he threw the blicks loss then there's no loss and then he goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> because in his head that's the killer that's good that's my shit that's my shit yeah oh I oh. done in the mirror <laughs> <He's>, yeah <laughs> standing like this in the front of the mirror so you saw that where you like I could do this shit no me and my cousin we're just looking at each other we go like dude what what, what the fuck was that and then oh, when man. we left the club my cousin's like hey Sean man you're, you're fucking thousand times funnier than those guys and I was like Yeah, actually, I oh, am. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I went in audition and then, yeah, took the mic and haven't left the mic for 17 years now. Damn. Yeah. That's crazy, man. <laughs> yeah, it's the origin story. Yeah, the, the Sean the Man <laughs> origin story. <Wow. laughs> More attitude than talent. <laughs> <laughs> so how come? <laughs> yeah, dude. It, <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> I never forget that, man. Oh, man. It's like printed in my head. So. When uh, how long did you live in Sweden before you uh, tried stand up? You I tried, moved you here. Tried your first stand up in Sweden, first right? One was here. You haven't done it in the states no, or it's nothing. It's on YouTube, man. No, you haven't done it in Adana in Turkish or no, stuff like that. No, no, I didn't do that. Um, I uh, I lived. I moved here in 2013, and my first gig was in 2015. Okay, two years. Yes, I was here two years. Uh, yeah, two years. Um, one Dude, month. you've been doing that like, for only four years. Yeah. Impressive, seriously. Thank you. Thank seriously you. impressive. No, that you're still doing it. It's <laughs> that's impressive. <laughs> <Should have quit>. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I started in 20 April 2015. It's on YouTube, man. My first one. Okay. I can't watch it now. Oh, But I, I kept know. it up as a reminder like where I came from. I know the feeling. Yeah, cuz that so was So what uh, what what was what was the Okay, first of all, why did you want to try stand up? Man, my entire life I've worshiped stand up. I used to listen to uh, Robin Harris Tape. Yeah, yeah. I had a tape, Robin Harris. Then I got the CD. Uh, if you don't know about Robin Harris, look him up, man. He was a uh, one of the greatest. One of, one the, of greatest, the greatest. Yeah. He died I, too young. That's all. Yeah, I know. You you sent me like a lot of links. Like, look at this. I I love Robin Harris. Yeah, he but he died too young, and uh, he died when he was coming up. It was about to hit that. He was starting to be in movies. Anyway, uh, Robin Harris was uh, what I used to listen to, and then of course one of the only uh, VHS tapes I used to watch was Eddie Murphy Raw. And uh Raw, not delirious, raw. That's the one my at my grandmother's house she had okay, raw. Okay. So I would go to her house and go through the movies and I'd get raw, put it in. Dude, you know he's gonna do stand up again? Yeah, man. Can't wait. Can't wait. <sighs> Two Can't shows. Wait. Yeah. Seventy million dollars. Yeah, man. Netflix specials, dude. I can't wait. And he's back. <laughs> he's back. It's gonna be amazing. Oh. I'm not even. I don't even think my expectations are too high, but they're just unlimited. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. Like, like, but I think he's gonna meet it no matter what. Seriously, you know what I gonna? Th- you know what I think? Like seriously, I think that he's the kind of comic that he doesn't care about pressure. He doesn't care about expectations. He's just Eddie, yeah. right? So I think with these two sh- two specials, he's gonna like show how's it how it is done. Like, yeah. really, yeah. look, I know Kevin Hart, Dave Chappelle, all you guys, you do your thing, but this, this is, is how, this this is is how you do yeah. it. <laughs> this is this yeah. is like how you do it. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I watched him. I wa- I just watched a lot of stand-up, and I even liked Sinbad a lot, man. He's really yeah, good. Yeah, but Sinbad yeah. was one of the originals, dude. Yeah, he was, like, yeah. really one of the original comics. Yeah, like, so. big, goofy-looking, yeah. like... Is it, uh, Air Force guy, by the way. Oh, he is? I yeah, didn't yeah. know that. Sinbad's Air Force. That's yeah. what, when I... Found that out. I was like, man, he was in the Air Force too, man, Sinbad. And then, <laughs> okay, okay. But I always, people always told me you should do stand up. And, uh, but I always, I had so much respect for the craft that I thought that, uh, and then my mom always, my mom used to always uh, say that uh, it's too many people, it's too many comedians out of a job for you to be trying to be funny. Oh, okay. So you need to do something else, you know. So My I, dad, when I, when I told my dad I'm going to be a comedian, he's like, you want people laughing at you? <laughs> he, d- he didn't like. Yeah, he can connect. Yeah, he couldn't like. He's like, okay. 
So you start stand up. What? How come? I want to know how your process was like writing jokes and and the feeling the first time you went on stage. Oh man! First not... of all, first of all, where was it the first time you went on stage? Where? I hear in Sudet. Yeah, it was Big Ben. Oh, okay, okay, first okay, okay. Well, the thing was, I had a podcast first, and uh, uh, we had a guest on Ahmed Berhan. Was a guest, the one who you wanted on here before me. No, it was Kojo, yeah. actually. Yeah. Was, uh, <laughs> Ahmed was my third choice, <laughs> and then you. <laughs> no, but uh, Ahmed was uh, was a guest on our pod because he knows uh, my 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 co one of my co-hosts, and uh, he was talking about the process. And I was sitting there like, <laughs> just loving everything he was saying, like hearing a comedian break it down. And then uh, he could he noticed it. And he was like, uh, dude, "Would you like to do it?" And, like, and, they, and they were making fun of me, like, "Look at this cat. He want to do this." And then he said, "If you're interested, there's comedy in English." I was like, "What?" And he's like, "English on Thursdays at Big Ben. You come out." He said, "I'll tell the guy. We'll put you on." And uh, he did. He put me on. And uh, that's when I started. So when I found out I was gonna do it, I started writing jokes. And they were like one-liners. That's what I thought comedy was. Yeah, well, just one-liners, yeah. So I was sitting there writing uh, jokes, and I, I was like, uh, bleach laws. But Peter bleach laws. Exactly. So I was writing. You just change this uh, was, to this. <laughs> Blacking it up. Yeah. <laughs> I was uh, Blix Laws with rhythm. <laughs> yeah. You're like, we need bigger Blix Laws, actually. <laughs> so I was uh, trying to write it, and then uh, I remember my boy read it to me. Okay. And he was reading the jokes, and I was like, this shit is bad. Yeah, this ain't funny. And then I went on a trip to uh, visit my brother. He was stationed in Italy. He's still in the Air Force. So he was stationed in Italy, so we went. Shout out to, what's your brother's name? Jason. Shout out to Jason, Shout out Italy. Jason. Signore, come sta? I'm molto bene. <laughs> all Kurdish people want to be Italians, by the way. That's, oh, really? That's, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah all, no. all, all Kurdish, like they want to be Italian. They're like, oh, well, what he had to do? Antonio. It's like everybody. <laughs> Sonazio. Yeah, yeah, but like, hey, Sonazio. <laughs> Sonazio. That doesn't sound Italian. Hey, uh, hey. <laughs> Just, hey, yeah, yes. walk out. Yeah, somebody starts talking Italian. You go like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, but, you you go to your brother. I went to visit my brother, and I was yeah. like, "Man, I got. I'm trying. I'm gonna. I'm ready to do this. I'm gonna do it because I've been talking about it my whole life. Here we go. I'm I'm over thirty. It's time to go. And he's like, uh, he's like, don't look at yourself like a comedian. You're your funniest when you're telling stories. Yeah. So he's like, pick some stories and then just tell those, and then you know, sharpen it up, whatever. And that's the best advice I got. Yeah, and he's not a comic, comic at all. Yeah, that is. And also, like I seen you on stage, like you, like I told you, you have this likability about you. Like a lot of comedians don't. A lot of Thanks. comedians, they're like, uh, uh, they just they just go hard, you know. Sometimes they they they're just hard. And me personally, I don't like that kind of a that kind of a uh, stand up, that kind of comedians. Because for me, the most the most like the comedians I grew up with, I love American humor. I'm not going like with English humor, you know, Monty no, Python no, no, or no. Eddie Izzard and stuff like that. Uh, like the 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 comedians that I love, it's like we talk about. Let's talk about Ed Murphy, for mm -hmm. example, Delirious and Raw. Like Delirious, he says some like really fucked up stuff yeah. about gay people, yeah. about AIDS, about you know everything about celebrities, like how like Mr. Mr. T, T, yeah, 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 like everything. But he's so likable, though. Yeah. Yeah, like he's the charm on Yeah, it. he's like so likable. Yeah. He has this charm. Like you, when you when you like, oh, look at this guy. He has this R. Same thing with with when he does raw. And today, yeah. like like if you if we talk about big comedians on stage today from from the from the states, like Dave Chappelle and Kevin Hart and these kind of guys, they all have this like charm and mm -hmm. likability and yeah. warmth. Uh, actually, I can't like remember one comic like that. That is successful. Like they, there's a small type of comedians that have this hard like type of thing. Like um, mm. I could last the only one I can think of is like Andrew Dice Clay. Yeah, Dice Dice was like that. He was he was like or maybe like Sam Kinison. Yeah, Kinison. But I was thinking more like um, the Mitch Hedberg. No, no, no. Yeah, Mitch. Oh my, Mitch Hedberg was a genius. Like, yeah, he was a genius. This is so intern. Like, <laughs> and, like and people's like, who is talking about? Look at Google it. <laughs> Uh, okay, so you do your thing, and then how <clears throat> how did it feel like when you left the stage? We Man, were like, it's on. I, I encourage people to go look at that YouTube video because <laughs> I I walked off stage right, <laughs> and I was I thought I had I thought I had crushed. I thought it was the best comedy set that anybody's ever done. You know what I mean? And I walked up, and you see me like do the Michael Jordan fist pump as I'm walking off stage. <laughs> 
Seriously. Uh, I was like, yes, I did that shit. You know what I'm saying? And it was, I went okay, over wait, time. Wait, 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 wait. Do you do the fist pump because you think you crushed it? I or? thought I crushed it. Oh, it's not like, okay, I I did this. Like, I, I had the no, courage to do like, this. No, I was like, uh, I just fucking killed it. You know, I had so much adrenaline. I was walking, like, I was walking down the street like, this is it, man. I, lo- I found it. I'm, I, I knew I was going to love this shit. <laughs> and I was, like, ready to do more. And then I watched the video uh, later. Because I watched that video. I was like, ah, uh, ah, uh, yes, uh, yeah, this is it. I got this. Then I did my second gig. And I was like, they didn't laugh when they were supposed to laugh. What happened? They didn't laugh when the last people laughed, yeah. <laughs> you know, in the last yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, And I had to I <laughs> learn that it ain't the, the same like that. And then, I, and then like a year later when I watched my first one, I'm embarrassed. I look so uncomfortable. Dude, I've been doing this so long. My first stand-up, it's on video. Like, <laughs> like we didn't have like YouTube or. You should put a clip of it right here. Yeah, you think so? I think Dude, you should. Dude, I'm too fucking, because I'll. <laughs> <laughs> I I had this I had that too like I was a oh, I crushed it I am yeah. a, that's why my because nobody told me that I didn't crush it and right. I was and I was too stupid to notice it myself you know mm-hmm. I was like dude because there was nobody there was nobody like me yeah. like a guy from uh, the okay. from Farutan talked the way I do looked the way because there was nobody like that okay so when I did my thing and I was talking the way I was talking on stage people were like oh there's a Harry on the Lunda when the neck on my blick slows pimpet people were like that and <laughs> I like this that blick slows have yeah. become a thing uh, <laughs> And and I did my thing, and people were like, "Oh!" But I remember, like early on my um early in my career, like when I was doing like uh, corporate gigs and stuff like that, or I was like booked in restaurants. Uh, when I said like, "Oh, my be svartskallar, be blattar, ni svennar," people were so offended. They were like, "Oh, really, dude?" I had like uh, I don't know how many times people just like nay and just pay the bill and left because they were so offended. Like, damn, yeah. Because I said Svartskalle or Blatte or Svennar, they were like, "No, he, you can't say that." And now, like everybody does it. Yeah, man. And now, like, every, yeah, dude. Like in the beginning, I, was, it wasn't like they uh, learned. They learned. Yeah, they, they learned. They're gonna learn today. They're gonna <laughs> learn today. <laughs> yeah, because you gotta, man. So you now you've been doing it for four years, right? Yeah, four years in the game. Four man. years in the game. Yeah, still loving it. Yeah, man. Yeah. I can't. I, yeah, I'm loving it. I'm. I'm trying to. Figure out how to make this because I have a day job, so I'm trying to figure out how to make this my day job. Stand up, my day job. Uh, well, uh, comedy, I shouldn't say stand up, but comedy, yeah. my day job. Um, stand up, it will never time. happen. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, don't quit your gay job. Uh, <laughs> <it's> <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I want to try to make it happen. The thing, the thing with stand up is like it's, it's like seriously, it's the, it's the gift that just keeps on giving because. Yeah. If you bomb, you're like, next time I'm gonna, yeah. and then you have that like adrenaline and that like driving you. But if you kill, you're like, oh, I, I wanna do this, this again. I'm do this yeah. again. Yes. Oh, I'm gonna do this again. Like it's and that, it's getting more saturated here in Stockholm too, where you can do. There's times when I've been able to do two gigs in one night. Yeah. And that's interesting too, because you can have one where you kill it and one where it just goes okay. You know what I mean? In the yeah, same yeah. night. But the, to me, those type of nights remind you. I mean, it doesn't happen that often. I don't have time uh, often to to nail it. But I, when I, I do, have a question that I never experienced. I I know you have experienced this many times. Uh, how does it feel when people are not laughing? <laughs> I can't relate either, man. Sorry, I've had been I've had luck. I guess I think no. I get a little bit of a pass too. I yeah. can't go without acknowledging the fact that I get a little bit of a pass. How 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 come? Like explain or a kind of a pass. I get a pass because I think a lot of people have seen American stand up. Their introduction to stand up has been seen in American. Okay. So in the Swedish audience, when they see me, first I'm speaking English, so they kind of have to listen. So I get that part out of the way. One of the hardest things is to get everybody's attention. When they know they're gonna have to, they really need to pay attention to know what I'm gonna say. I have a half of the half half of the the battle is already won, yeah. and then I'm kind of what they expect to see a little bit. This big black guy and and I mean, not even the black thing or the big the big black guy, but the no, I, I have the energy of a comedian on stage. Kinda. No, I think about yeah, okay, but you are like the like the typical 
If you go like, yeah, he's from America, he's gonna do stand up, and then you go like, oh, the black guy from America gonna do stand up. Yeah, they think, yeah, yeah, of course. So and, it's and, like, and, the, and everybody, everybody speaks English in Sweden. Like everybody exactly. does, and good English, you know. And they're proud of it. Yeah, of course. And they get to be like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna laugh when I'm, I'm gonna get this. Yeah, and they and come they afterwards it. and they speak English. They go like, oh my god, you were so funny. It wouldn't fucking work if I would. Like if I go up, I go, and I, if I mm-hmm. do my courageous thing, people would be like, "What? What is he talking I'm about?" Not as familiar with the culture. No, yeah. no, nobody would like that. Get, get this terrorist out yeah. of here. So I think I get that, and I think that's part of why I haven't had that where a full set of no laughs. Oh, I dude, I've been there. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't had it. No, yeah, no. But uh, I've had gigs that don't go so well, or gigs where I like I need to work on the shit. Do you like use that as a motivation, or? Yeah, I think I. I use it. Uh, I take. I, I understand that it exists, so I don't think. Oh, I killed it tonight when I really didn't kill it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When I know that uh, they, or sometimes I feel even worse after. I got a joke about my wife's grandmother, and it's, I think it's a well written joke. I think it's a good joke, but sometimes when the way people are laughing at it, it's like um, I almost feel like, oh, am I doing something that's. Yeah, people people Kitchy, would you know people would never understand. Only like we, not even like comedians. Like there's a lot of you know influencers, Instagram comedians or Facebook comedians, whatever you want to call yeah. them. But that nobody would understand the creative process of writing a joke like, like a stand up comedian. Yeah. Because like we have this special. It's not a talent. It's it's a kind of sickness. You know, it, like <laughs> no, no, seriously, yeah, it's, it's yeah. a kind of sickness that you write a joke and you know the joke is good. But you always poke in it, yeah. like you always go like, no, no, one second here, or oh, I can say this, yeah. I can take this tur- word, yeah, out. turn yeah. my eyes like this, or I can make yeah. my face go. You always like poking on it, yeah. and and there's like jokes that there's a joke like you, you work on it like for for years, or like oh my god, when I do this on stage, it's gonna kill, and then you go like nobody laughs, you go like. Yeah. And they have this. Like, Damn, like, that shit worked yeah. last week. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> and then you have like this stupid joke that everybody's like, <laughs> you're like exactly. This is Just not. Want... This is not even. I have to say this yeah. to go over Get to back. the yeah, yeah to go over to the next joke. <laughs> exactly. And you're laughing at like, this. You part? motherfucker! You yeah. start getting mad at the audience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah oh. That's how I feel sometimes. Like, I know if I do a joke about because Swedes like to hear about themselves. Yeah, absolutely. I talk about Swedish, uh, you know, Swedish culture or whatever. It's gonna get a laugh most likely. Yeah, especially I wrote it. I feel like I'm a good joke writer. I write a good joke about it too. We got it, but I also feel like there's there's somebody who does it great here. There's Al Pitcher does it great. All right. Yeah, he's 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 really yeah, and he's a really good comedian. And he does that stuff. So that's his lane. I gotta get. You know what I mean? So my next time around when this material I'm working with is done, they're not gonna hear anything about Sweden anymore. Yeah, man, because. I I realized like early in my career that you uh, you have to seriously respect the audience because if yeah. you if you go go on stage and you talk about uh, stuff that's not uh, relatable and and you like don't share like you people mm-hmm. people know that yep that's people true. go like no nah, that's not him and that's not his persona you know yeah. because if I go on stage and I talk about like oh min mamma rösta på moderaterna vi brukar spela golf och segla ja min pappa people go like hey dude you like you no... adopted yeah <laughs> <laughs> people like uh, lying fuck and <laughs> and when I go like one of I know we talked about this uh, earlier you and me uh, Richard Pryor is like He's yes. like, yeah, he's like com- the, the, the number one. Yeah, he's like yeah. a comedy yeah. god. He's yeah, like, yeah. For, he's, he's like everything for yeah. me. Like, I love him, and and that was like one of the absolute rawest and most honest people on stage I have ever seen. Like, yes. he's talk about his drug abuse, talk about like his mother was a prostitute, father was a pimp, father yeah. was a pimp, and the grandmother was a bordel mom. Yeah. And you, you know, like like struggle with the wife, like killing his car and stuff like that. But it's so funny. Yeah. Dude, it's so funny. You yeah. go like, how can you talk about injecting heroin and it's funny? And I'm laughing. Yeah. Like yeah. it's and I've never done heroin. Yeah, <laughs> but, but anyway, you, <laughs> <laughs> you, you can relate. Dude. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm Kurdish. I smoke opium. Sound was like two. <laughs> no, 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 they were hemp. Don't do that, kids. Not don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Uh, yeah, stand up special, dude. Like. Yeah, man. Love it. How often do you do it now? Stand up. How often do you? Do At it? least three times a week. You do it, right? At least three times a week. But uh, I want to get out more because I have I have jokes in my head that I haven't been able to work on because twice a week I'm hosting yeah. stand up shows, 
and then uh, well three times a week I'm hosting those three nights. So if I want to work on some stuff, I don't. I feel like it's wrong to the audience for me to be up there trying to work on stuff while I'm the host of a show. Like oh, MC, I do that. I maybe, but I can't, I, I did I, that actually. No, I don't. I never I, see you MC. No, I, no. But like before in the early career when I had my own, I had a, a stand up club, right? Okay. Like the er, early days in my career, me and and uh, uh, another comedian, we had a, a stand up club, and it was us and uh, Nora Brun. It was those two places okay. that you could do stand up, and we started our own club just actually to get some stage time. Uh, okay. And then I was hosting like every other week. One week he was hosting, and the other week I was hosting. So every time I was hosting, I I would try out material. I would like see, that's my that's my I can't I feel like I can't it doesn't feel genuine if I'm trying to do it and because I felt like when out. I was hosting and trying material I was I was feeling like they don't have the same expectation right, uh, it's smart it's smart yeah they I don't, agree I just can't make yeah. myself do it I was I, like they I don't know. expect me to be funny because I'm the host then I can right. try new material because those other guys they have to be funny but so, I can't make my I can't be like oh I can't see myself you can help me with this I can't see myself going hey thank you guys for coming to the show uh so um Grocery shopping, huh? Yeah. You know, like, yeah. that's funny. <laughs> no, no seriously, it's funny. I can't make you go myself. like, yeah, so, and then break into a joke. I can't like. <laughs> what about groceries? <laughs> you go like that. <laughs> so, uh, Blake Sloth. Yeah, anyone? you know anyone? the guys do you guys do groceries? <laughs> I just, I don't, I came because uh, I'll talk about welcome to the show, blah blah blah. Introduced to doing the whole show. The thank you guys for coming out. This is this. This is what the night is, and then do a bit. Yeah. Crowd work, and then like sometimes I might try to make crowd work work into it. If I have an idea that pops up through crowd work, then yeah. That's, but otherwise, I can't. That's like, why, I, me personally, I love crowd work. Like you know, yeah, I know you do. Yeah, yeah, no, I I love like good at it too. Yeah, I love it, man. I don't know what it is. Like something like we we did a show a couple of weeks ago, like yeah. two weeks ago. Yeah, that was the uh, that was the only thing I did. That was like a bachelorette party, yeah, yeah, yeah. dude. Nice. Poor girl, I just ran all over her. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good time. <laughs> that, was that was a good fun. time. Yeah. So two kids, wife, day job. How do you how do you like how do you have time to write and, and perform and stuff like that? It's not easy, huh? I don't sleep a lot. Yeah. I don't need that much sleep, I should say. It's not like I'm like making myself get up. If I lay down, I probably would to naturally wake up after five or six hours. You know what I mean? So I don't sleep that much. Is that like paranoia you have in your body? Day. Yeah, I'm like, police! <laughs> I would go sweating. <laughs> what are the police at? Migration. <laughs> Migration. Deportation again. It's again. 18,000, you mother. I ain't going to Jersey. I don't want to go to Jersey. I don't want to go to Jersey. 18,000 a month? <laughs> just, I know, right? I'm like, back. <laughs> you just wake up. Uh, I, uh, no, I, um, I don't How old are the kids, sleep. by the way? They're like... Five and two. Five and two, yeah. And they have the princess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I met yeah, her, man. She's beautiful. Thank you. Cute as cute like a cute as a button. You say that right? Cute. Yeah, yeah, it's a cute yeah. As a yeah. She's 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 beautiful, so charming girl. Thank You're you. You gonna have a Thank problem you. with her when she grows up? Nah, I don't yeah. have a problem with. Dude, her. a lot of a lot of boys would be like, "Can she come out and play?" You know, I get. Them. I won't. I won't be that type of dad. But go ahead, girl, have your fun. You? Do, uh, <laughs> I don't think so. You're a military dad, dude. That's all right. You'd be like, no, nah, oh, you want to play with my daughter? No, nah, I don't believe in that <laughs> shotgun stuff, man. You don't? No, nah. I do. <laughs> 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 and I have a son. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but um, I forget what we were talking about. Did you? You didn't ask a question. No, no. I kids. said, how do you, how do you like have time uh, to write and how time time to like perform? You you still doing like three times a week? Yeah. Um. I just my, I gotta really understand the wife. She knows just what I want to do, and there's a goal behind it all. So what is the goal? Like I said, I want to be doing this as a, like doing entertaining for a living so I can quit Full the time, day job. Right? So in, o- in order to do that, I'm trying to make it a smooth transition instead of just. Uh, but you also do like you have, you do pods, pods and yeah, exactly. I got the pod, I got the home rows and then I got my club. Yeah. So. För alla er som, som kollar på programmet, Jonathan har ju en grej som heter Home Row som han sänder på sin Facebook-sida där han bjuder in uh, komiker från all over the world, all over the world yeah. right? Yeah. Så det kan man kolla. Vi kommer ha mer information om vad man kan följa Jonathan på hans Instagram, på hans Facebook. Så kommer komma information i slutet av programmet. Så för er som vill kolla på lite skön rose, för er som vill kolla på, eh, på Jonathan, hur man kan nå och sådär. Det kommer information lite senare. Uh, now I remember the first time I saw you. Uh, I was like, this guy, he's going to be a good writer. And oh. <laughs> not, not a comedian, like a writer. <laughs> just writing yeah, books. He's, 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 <laughs> he's gonna write a novel. Yeah, <laughs> uh, children's book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I remember. Yeah, I remember the first time. You know what? First time 
I, you know, the first time I saw you was like one of my, my first times headlining. Okay. And uh, I think uh, Laszlo, shout out to Laszlo. Yeah, Laszlo Gulles, uh, Mafia Comedy Club Agare på Söder. Uh, Respect y'all. Uh, uh, He's Laszlo. one of the OGs, dude. Yeah, I know. And he acts like it too. <laughs> Still ain't paid me from that night. Nah. <laughs> no, but Laszlo. Dude, he uh, never pays me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He, when he talks to me, when he wants me to come and perform on his club, he talks to me like I owe him money. Oh, see, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's Laszlo. Uh, and Everybody like... <laughs> owes Laszlo in his head. But he, uh, I think he wanted to get the show, make sure the show was a success. So he, he booked you to close the first half. Okay. And uh, I was gonna, uh, it was my headline. Okay. So that was my first time meeting you. Okay. Uh, that uh, night, and you walked in, you were just all cool, and you just came in, kind of did your thing, and then left. No, I think you stuck around and watched me, but uh, I didn't really know you. No, uh, um, you might have left before. I don't remember. But I remember you did it. We had a similar joke. I haven't done it since. We had a joke, uh, and yours is way better, obviously. But we had a joke. Um, you did the uh, the lullaby thing you do. I love it when you do the Turkish song. Yeah, when I did I was... it with. I used to. I had that joke. I had the Serious? same joke. Yeah, I had the same joke, but um, I would sing the thong song to my baby. It would really happen. I was, I was trying to put my son to sleep, and uh, um, feeling on your booty came in my head. The R. Kelly song. And I didn't want. I, I thought people might not know that song. When you had your son, I had my your, son. Yeah, feeling on your booty, whatever, came, yeah. or Kelly. Yeah, good <laughs> reference, dude. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> and so, so that happened, and I was like, man, this could be a joke. I had just started doing comedy. I was like, man, this could be a joke. This uh-huh. just happened. So I made it. I was trying to think of a song everybody knows. So I did thong song. So I was singing. I did the lullaby the same way you did. And that <clears throat> night when I was gonna headline, you did that joke and. I was like, no, I can't do the joke. This guy, yeah, I was like, this guy has this, a joke similar to mine, and I know it happens in the stand-up. I've heard about it happening in the stand-up world. I was kind of flattered that it happened with an established comedian like uh, yourself. And I was, I, I had that joke like, oh my god, I don't know how long. I had that joke like maybe for three, four years, something like that. Uh, and uh, it came like actually when my son when he was when he was little i was i always used to like sing uh, swedish lullabies like mm-hmm. original imsem used to spin the stuff like that and uh, i did a show in örebro once so me w- w- with a friend we went from stockholm to örebro we did this and then when we came back uh, we were listening to kurdish music uh, uh-huh. in the car and there is this like big big kurdish song every kurdish people knows it it's called agerketia which is like fire in my fire in my heart like Uh, and all Kurdish songs are the same. Guys, guy loves a woman. Woman doesn't love him back. He's gonna kill himself. Like that's <laughs> that's like the the premises of all the Kurdish <laughs> Kurdish Sounds songs. Good. Yeah, Kurdish songs and Kurdish movies. Uh, every, <laughs> like like uh, you love me? No, I'm gonna kill myself. Okay, take it easy. Uh, <laughs> so this <laughs> so this song we play it, and my friend, which has a beautiful voice, and he goes like, he he sing that song. Oh, get a cat, yeah. And then uh, I'm like, uh, yeah, we talk about the joke, and then I have uh, Blinka Lilla Khana, the Swedish one. Mm-hmm. And then, like, as I was saying, Blinka Lilla Khana, the song from, like, I was like, and the way you do it is so good, too. So yeah. I was just like, I had I retired that joke that night. You did? Yeah. Yeah, you should retire a lot of your jokes. Uh, <laughs> we, <laughs> <laughs> I just need you to say something similar. And I'm like, all right, yeah, they're done. <laughs> I, I actually, I, I remember that first time I saw you. Like, uh, like I said, I, um, I like like comedians. They have a, a warmth on stage and like the personality yeah. that that isn't like hard and stuff like that. Because if you're not, then you could go all in. Yeah. Because people, like I said, you can talk about vile things and people go, right. but he's he's so charming he's nice though. Guy, yeah. He's a nice guy, and 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 you could do that. I I try I try a lot a lot of like stuff before I go on tour. I try like my material on stage and and like all we do, like we we yeah. we try it on family, on friends, on on stage, and like how it goes and stuff like that. But uh, when I saw it the first time, I was like, oh man, this is like hardcore like American stuff. I seen yeah, I, I seen so. like a lot of American com- comedians here in Sweden, like English comedian talking English and stuff like that. But I like that you were like so into your roots and stuff like that. When you talk about your grandma, you talk about your yeah. like Miami, your dad, your, your your mother and stuff like that. Uh, no man, I, I really liked it. Thanks man, I appreciate no it. seriously, like like it was really really funny. And now like you, I know that you have some momentum going on and you have like oh, people like no but just just keep on grinding dude like oh, we're sure will, man. stand up especially like it's like you're you're as better as your last gig if, yes. you, if your last gig suck then you suck 
Yeah, I sucked then. Yeah, I like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bomb last night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should have last night. Real stinker, dude. <laughs> uh, and and the thing with stand up is like uh, what I love about stand up, and I want to ask you the same question: what okay. what draws you? For me, is that there's no second takes. That's true. Yeah, there's no no second yeah. chance. It's and not, they're gonna think that about you. Yeah, like, you're exactly. That person, L- yeah. Like now we're filming all of this, right? And we're gonna send it. But if something doesn't work, we go. We could go like cut. We'll do it again, yeah. and then we do it again. We've done it seven times. <laughs> we seventeen times. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can't <laughs> stop coughing. <laughs> we we cut out all his jokes. <laughs> <laughs> like there's there's no but you can do it like second time third time whatever you need but stand up dude you do you it. deliver a joke it's funny they laugh it's not funny and it's not funny move on yeah you don't have like you can't say to the audience uh event is scared that hang on tape uh like it doesn't work it doesn't work and that's that's what i love about stand up that's yeah. what i love about it. what 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 draws you to do it though uh when i was uh, in the military i was an air traffic controller Right, and then my first base was Alaska. This was my first touch of air traffic control. So you sit there, and all the planes, um, they call it recovery. So it was all the F-15s, all the C-130, all the different types of planes coming and and landing at the same time, intersecting runways. This is like the hardest type of traffic you could work. And I'm sitting there, and I'm talking to all of the planes. And for like two hours, you get this crazy rush, like of adrenaline, like what the fuck, all of these planes. And then you, when you're done, you made it all happen. <clears throat> everybody's safe. And you just like, ah, it's a fucking release of yeah. like adrenaline and craziness. And I get the same rush as I did in air traffic control that I do. And I get that same rush um, doing stand up. It's beautiful, man. Yeah, it's Seriously, it's, it's the rush. Beautiful. Yeah. So. I have, I I compare it to I have the same feeling when I'm on stage as I'm with my son. Uh, yeah, okay. because nothing else matters. Yeah. Uh-huh. When I'm with my with my boy Kian, shout out Baba El Skadi Qurbani. Shout out Kian. Yeah. When I'm with my son, like, dude, the whole world can burn up. I don't care. He's with me. Oh, it's it's great. like it's my time. It's it's our time. He's mine. I have almost the same feeling when I'm on stage. Like the whole world can burn down. I'm on stage, dude. Good. I'm untouchable. Is that why you never keep your time? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always keep my time. I'm Don't smart. say it like that. I always keep my time. I always respect the time. Dude. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> Sean, I'm like, ah, fuck Jonathan Rollins. <laughs> I know it's his show. <laughs> fuck him. Yeah, taking him to fucking headline. <laughs> <laughs> so what's going on now? What do you have like plans in the future? Uh, like, I really believe in this home roast thing, man. You do? A lot of comedians are liking it. You shouldn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to grow the home roast. A lot of uh, international comedians coming out. I got a, a better, uh, the first few, I had the software and I didn't like it. So I switched to a different software and it's going much smoother now. So the episodes look good. Okay. So I think that matters too. So, so the home roast is going on. You, you're still roast. doing stand up in the clubs? Yeah, I'm hitting the clubs. Um, I got these jokes in my head I need to get out. So I'm going to start hitting some open mics uh, if my mom, my wife allows uh, cause I, manly, I do so much. Really manly. Yeah, I, yeah. that's me, man. I'm the new. I'm 2019, <laughs> man. <laughs> the, uh, and my my club, the Laugh House, is the. I like to to point out there's the only all English stand up comedy club, all English. Uh, in Sweden. Det kommer information om vad ni kan se John som yeah. sagt uh, vi kommer lägga upp uh, uh, kontaktinformation och adress och så där. And you have mm. also the pod you're doing. Yeah, the Power Meeting podcast me and my two Swedish homies. That's we, they speak Swedish, I speak English. And okay. we just talk about life. It's good, man. It's my two best friends. So, shout this, out to them, man. I'm this went be. really well now. Like I I was I I have to admit I was a little bit nervous. Oh man. No, Not about you, uh, but talking English. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Oh yeah. It was. It was really. No, I was like, English. I'm doing a whole show in English. I uh, like. Was it, were you speaking English? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. I was like, this is the worst Spanish. <laughs> the fuck kind of Turkish Spanish is this? <laughs> what kind of hybrid language is this? <laughs> oh, you're talking English. Tur- Turnish. <laughs> Turk. <laughs> Turnish. That's the new one. Turnish. Turkish, Turkish Spanish. <laughs> Uh dude. Yo, John, from the bottom of my heart, man. Really, thank you for doing this. Thank uh, you for coming to my new show. And thanks I, for having me, man. No, dude, always funny to meet you. Like, I'm serious. Like, we always have fun. Yeah, we, we do. We always do. have fun. Yeah. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for coming to the show. My best for the family. Same and uh, like I said, man, I'm gonna keep an eye on you, and I'm gonna come Appreciate to your it. shows. And for all of you people that want to go, we have information. Thank you very much. Nerdaxo Avrunda. 
Så jag vill tacka John som sagt. Uh, vill tacka alla er som tittar. Tacka alla våra sponsorer. Kommer komma lite kontaktinformation. Vi syns nästa vecka. Och jag vill uh, också lägga till att i november månad så kommer jag ha shower i Stockholm och shower i Göteborg. Med min show Backa framåt som den här showen heter. Det kommer komma information och så kommer <laughs> What was this? Backa framåt. Ja, <laughs> uh, backa framåt. That's my dad, you know, he says that. Backa framåt. He says backa framåt, stressa lugnt and then he says gå in härifrån. <laughs> those, those are the three <laughs> things. <laughs> Så jag kommer ha showen backa framåt i Stockholm och Göteborg. Det kommer komma mer information. Tack för att ni kollar. Tack John. Som vanligt. Kärlek, respekt. Ha det bra Youtube. Ciao. Mm.